Hi guys, uh, so this video is going to be about my top embroidery tips and tricks for beginners. When I sell embroidery kits, I often get asked by people how they can get started. So I'm going to cover things like how to use your embroidery hoop, how much thread you should use at one time, what it means by using two strands for example, how to separate your strands, how to tie a knot in them, how to thread your needle, and how to finish off a stitch when you are done. So if you are a beginner, or fairly new to embroidery, or even if you've been stitching for a little while, I hope this video helps. Please get in touch in the comments, or via social media if you have any questions, or if you think I've missed anything, that I can pop in another video for you guys. So yeah, let's get going. So the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is embroidery hoops. So you can stitch without one, um, but I find it a gazillion times easier to stitch in an embroidery hoop. So there's one brand of embroidery hoop that I like best, and they are Elbacy. Um, they are the heavyweight embroidery hoop champions. They're just really good quality. Um, you can buy cheaper versions, and they're fine, but you can find that they arrive to you warped which you can still use, but they won't hold your fabric as tight. I tend to use six or seven inch hoops, maybe eight inch. Uh, so if you are a beginner and you're looking to buy your first hoop, take a look at your pattern that you've chosen to work on. And it should tell you in there what size you want. If not, shoot for a six or seven inch hoop. So I'm gonna show you how to get your fabric in your hoop. So you want to unscrew the outer ring and pop your hoop into two parts and then you want to get the inner bit so that's the bit without a screw on and lay it flat on your table lay your fabric over top and don't worry too much about it being perfectly centered. You can always, when you finish stitching, jiggle it around, you know, take it out and put it back in so it's completely centered and lovely. My aim when I put a project in a hoop is just to make sure I can access all of the bits to stitch nice and easily. Uh, so you've got your inner ring flat on the table, your fabric on top, and then you wanna push down the outer ring over the top. Now you may need to loosen it even more to do that. So there's some movement there. So just lay it down and push it on so it's holding your fabric. And then you want to tighten this screw here up. So I'm just gonna pop that round so I can do that. And just before you're kind of as tight as you can go, you want to pull the corners of your fabric so that your fabric is nice and taut in your hoop. And the aim is to get it kind of tight like a drum skin, if you've ever handled a drum skin before. And you know, you may find that you need to keep re tightening your fabric as you go because you're tugging on it as you stitch and that's fine. If you notice it's getting a little bit slack, just stop for a minute, pull the corners and pull the edges so it's tight and do that screw back up as tightly as you can get it. I see people stitching a lot with slack fabric and it just, just it makes your life harder. Do you spend the time to get it nice and flat and taut in your hoop and make sure you're keeping an eye on it as you stitch and, and readjust it as you go. Once you've got your fabric nice and tight in your hoop, it's time to start sewing. So the next thing you need is some embroidery thread. Um, if you've bought one of my kits, you'll have enough included to complete your project. If you're looking for what to buy, I recommend DMC thread. So the reason I prefer DMC thread is because it's double mercerized. So that means it's got a really nice sheen which looks nice, but also means it glides through your fabric better, so it doesn't get stuck as often, which means less knots, less swearing, less drama all round, really. You know, I've tried a lot of different brands of thread, and I always go back to DMC, so I do recommend using them. 
So most of the time for embroidery, you'll use what is called stranded cotton. This arrives in an eight meter skein and it's made up of thread that can separate into six individual strands. Any embroidery pattern or kit that you're working on should tell you how many different strands to use for each different section. It's common to work with two at a time, but it really varies depending on what texture you're looking for, how fine the work is, and just how you want it to look when it's finished really. You can use your thread straight from the skein like this. My recommendation is to pull from the end of the skein, it's got the number on it. So if you look, I would be pulling from this end and there should be a tail at the bottom here somewhere. And if you pull it out this end, it's a lot less likely to get tangled up. If you pull it from this end you'll probably just pull it in to a big knot and um, I like when I get new thread to wind them on to bobbins you can also wind round a clothes peg so how much thread should you use you don't want to cut off such a short amount that you're reaching the end of it really quickly but you equally don't want to use a really really long piece because you're much more likely then to get knots at the back of your work have to reach your arms out maybe punch someone in the face you know don't do that so my recommendation is to use your arm as a guide so just hold your thread in your hand and pull back to just halfway between your elbow and your shoulder and that's how much i would use and then just snip off that amount once you've got your length of thread, you need to separate enough strands. The easiest way to separate your strands of thread from six down to, for example, two, is to pull them out from in between your fingers, one thread at a time. Your pattern should tell you how many strands to use. I'm gonna show you separating three as an example. It can be quite tempting to then try and separate all three at once, you know, just to just you know count three strands and pull um you're likely to end up with a knot if you do that so this is my go-to method so you want to nip the threads in between your fingers and thumbs with two or three centimeters coming out from the top and then slowly one at a time just grab one thread and pull it up and you'll see it bunching up here and that's nothing to worry about and keep pulling till it's all the way out of your finger and thumb. And then repeat that to get as many strands as you need. So sometimes you'll just have to manipulate them a bit first. So that's number two. And then number three. So once you separated your strands, you need to thread your needle. So pick them up, and then at this point, I like to just snip them off so then they're all exactly level, and then it's time to thread your needle. So you can either go for the old school lick it and stick it method, which tends to be what I do most of the time, excuse my concentrating face or if you struggle with threading a needle you can use a needle threader and I'll show you how. So you want to start by threading your needle threader through the eye of the needle and push the needle all the way to the bottom and then you want to get your thread and thread that through the diamond shaped hole and put it through and then you want to pull the needle down until it's past that tail of thread and then just pull that out of the needle threader and then ta-da you are threaded so once your needle is threaded you want to position the thread so there is one long tail and one shorter tail and you can you know adjust that along as you work um, and then you want to tie a knot in the end of the long tail so this is how i tie a knot in my embroidery thread 
So I've got the end of the tail that isn't attached to the needle. So I've got the very end of the thread. And then I'm gonna wrap that around my finger twice. So I've got a loop. And then you're gonna take the end of that tail and pop it through the loop and pull so then that forms a knot at the end. So then you've got a knot at the end and then you're just gonna take your scissors and snip just above the knot. Ta-da! So then you're threaded, knotted and ready to go. So then you need to decide whereabouts on your pattern you're gonna start. Unlike with cross stitch, it doesn't really matter where you start with embroidery. So with cross stitch, you tend to wanna to start in the middle and then work out. But with embroidery, you can just go for it really. Um, I tend to try and work a colour at a time to save changing my thread over too much. The only time I start with a particular stitch is if there's satin stitch which colours areas in and then there's other details around it. I would start with the satin stitch so anything else sits on top of it. But even then it doesn't really matter, just um, pick a colour, pick a section and give it a go. So I'll be filming some more in-depth stitch tutorials. Um, I'm not going to cover any of those in this video. Keep an eye out for them. Um, there's just a couple more tips I want to leave you with. So there's lots of old school embroidery methods that say the back of your work is as important as the front. I don't agree. The only thing I would say to keep in mind about the back is don't leave any threads long. Snip them off when you're done so you don't pull them through to the front. And if you're working on an area here, for example, in, in a blue, and then you want to move over to here, if it's more than a centimetre or two, I would secure your work at the back, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Snip off your thread, tie a new knot, and bring it up at the next stage. If it's only a couple centimetres, you can, you can just move over. So when you need to either move sections, change colour or you're running low on thread, you'll need to tie off your work at the back. So when you've only got a few inches of thread left, that is when you want to start thinking about securing your thread at the back and moving on. What you want to do is bring your needle to the back of your work and then pass your needle under one of your previous stitches without going through the fabric, so just under that stitch and then pull it, leaving a loop, and then pass your needle through that loop and pull it tight, and that will secure it at the back. So I usually do that twice. So I'm gonna go back under another stitch without going through the fabric, pull into a loop, and then pass my needle through that loop and pull it tight. And then you just want to take your embroidery scissors and then just snip that off close to the knot. So those are my tips and tricks on getting started with embroidery. If you've got any other questions or anything else you'd like to know, leave me a comment, drop me a message, and I'll either get back to you personally or I'll make a new video with some extra tips in if there's common themes. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.